All right, so before we're grooming, you take them to the dog park. You, you wash them, and they're really tired right now, or at least they should be. So it's a perfect time to start. So um, going over the stuff, we have uh, clippers we got at Target. I think those were $60, $40, lower than that? 30 It was 30 something dollars. Anyways, because it is the cheaper kind, you have to take breaks because it heats up and it, you know, you have to be careful and, and make sure that it doesn't uh, burn them. Um, also, you have to clean them using the solution, or I think it's some sort of oil, uh, before and after use, and you even may have to lubricate it during, because their skin is, or their hair is very oily. It could actually jam this thing up, make it to where it can hurt them. So, just con the the less money you spend, the more you have to clean this, and the longer it'll last. Uh, we use a half clip or larger to blend the sides and the front so that it looks like, like a better transition. And then a regular comb, a human comb for any kind of knots. Scissors if we encounter any of those knots. And their eyebrows too. And their eyebrows and like most of their face. And then a after we're all done, we use Frontline Plus. It seems to be the best. Um, for us at least. For us. We've actually seen ticks, but none of them have ever been attached. And we've never had a, a flea problem. So those are the two that two kinds of things that we're going to encounter here in California. So let's get started. Okay. I start from the back. So by the time I get to his head, he's tired from standing. And again, a tired puppy is easier to work on than an energetic one. So you turn it on for a while to get him used to the sound. And then once you start cutting from behind, um, it'll be much easier. So if you've noticed, there's kind of like a swoosh a line here. And once you cut that line the first time, then what you do is just cut by, by lines. So to start, if you notice that he has a back and then it starts to round around. You want to trim him when it starts rounding just below where it rounds. So that his hair is on the bottom shooting out this way versus cutting it right there to where it makes him look fat and furry uh, out to the side. So, And once you establish that line, you can move it around a little bit and it's much easier once you get that done. So, let's start from the back. Always go against the hip, always go against the grain in very slow increments because you don't want to rip out his hair and that'll be very painful. And if it hurts him, you're going to have a tough time working with them. You just kind of shake it off every time because their hair is very oily that it'll, it'll mess up the clippers. Be very care careful of his butt because you don't want to cut his butthole. I find it easier holding the tail up to kind of get the hair out of tension. If you guys haven't used clippers before, you never go like that. You go like this. Because that will be kind of, these parts are kind of sharp and it would be hurting them. So you, like, you do multiple passes like this to uh, get the hair down. Don't go like this.
try to pinch and hold your skin so that you're cutting on a flat surface. Because if you pinch it, it could get nicked in the clippers. I cut my, uh, we cut our schnauzers a little bit shorter hair than normal. But if you notice, it's just, just the clipper itself extended all the way using the side out. Not the closest, but the furthest from this. And then from the side, you just go straight down, whoop, go straight down. You go straight down that line. Perpendicular. Short strokes. He may look kind of bushy now, but we'll come back and fix that. Make sure that you clean your brush, add oil if needed, but this seems to be working pretty well right now. Because if anything like dirt or grime or anything gets in there, it's going to damage the blades and then not cut as well and possibly hurt him most importantly. Uh, now you're looking at the head and the neck. So by this time he's just tired, probably exhausted from standing here. So this is the perfect time to, to cut. Now the number one rule about cutting any schnauzer head is you have to be extremely careful of the ears. Because once you nick their ears once or twice, they hate getting their hair cut. And then it's forever going to be a battle. So, lots of encouragement, even treats if necessary. Alright, so, can you hold this neck up? Now with his chest, a lot of people like to go straight across. I kind of like to do this little, not star pattern, but almost like a trail. just so it doesn't look weirdly straight. See how it goes straight, kind of over that and then down. So it doesn't look weird straight. I always like to just grab their ears. Number one, he won't be able to turn away and hurt himself, but you have good, good control. Not harming him with his ears, just should always play with their ears so that they're used to you touching them. Because this is where it benefits right here. Okay. Okay. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. You have to grab on or he's going to move it and chop his old beard off. It's okay. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. He's fighting me, but I'm not letting him win because I don't want him to lose an eyebrow. It's okay. Stay. Stay. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. 
Good boy. So if you notice, you trim straight up to just under the eye is usually how I measure it. And then try to take off a little bit of this right here, this part right here, just so that his face isn't big and round. See how his face kind of is chiseled? So, see, because a lot of schnauzer faces are big and puffy. So if we take out the sides, it chisels it down. The ears are probably the most important thing on his entire body. So you desensitize it by just grabbing and pulling and just playing with his ears so he doesn't care that if this thing's touching it. So the important thing about an ear is that you always start from the base where his skull is and going out towards the tips. Because if you go the other way, you have a potential of getting the edge caught in this thing. Now, if you haven't, if you don't know his ears very well, there's a really weird flap on the front here that curls up like this always. And it's really hard to see. So you have to uh, just really notice it. And it's kind of hard. I'll show you after we're done cutting it, but um, you'll know what I'm talking about. You might not take a lot off, but you just do it a whole bunch of times. And it's pretty much the only way to guarantee that you don't nip one of their, their ears and then forever, their whole life, they're never going to like this. So, that flap I was telling you about, you can kind of push it over and hold it with your thumb so you don't get it in. Hey. As you can see, he got really tired and he laid down, so he's been much easier to deal with. So I just went over the ears because you have to pass over them quite a bit. So this is, it's off, but just as an example, sit down. Sit down. Sit. There you go. So as an example, you take his ear, you squeeze it between your hands so it flattens out, and you just go out to the edge, out to the edge. If you need to, you can start in the middle of the ear and go out to the edge this way. Now a couple things on this little guy, because every ear is different. But here's that flap I was telling you about. It's up like that all the time. So you have to be careful. If you were to go this way, you would cut his ear right along here. And you may even nick that off, which will traumatize him. Also, on the back of their ear, they have a, a flap, it's okay baby, they have a flap right here that if you go that way, you'll hit it right there. So that's why you always start in the middle and go out. So you're always going that way. And you just do it a whole bunch of times and you'll get all the hairs. And they're all going to be a little furry on their ears anyways, but I'd rather have that than potentially hurting them. And what you'll do is go back with the scissors later, as we'll show you and you pinch the edge and you you pinch the edge and you feel the edge and then you cut the hair around it so it'll be good so just after you do his ears just play with his ears and say good boy good boy and he'll know that you did it it was a good thing that he did so we're going to continue on with cutting the rest of the face You'll probably hear some louder cuts because you're cutting his uh, whiskers. All right. Okay. Just clean up around his ear. You have to pull his ear back. There's some hair under there. Remember, very careful because he's got a lot of uh, sensitive areas underneath his ears. 
How does he look? Got a piece right there. Okay. His chest looks good. Good boy. Just rub them all over. Good boy. The more you do this, the more touching, the more he gets used to it. And by now he doesn't really care about anything because he's so exhausted. Get some dog park, some, some uh, bath time. And now I've been standing here for like a half an hour, 20 minutes. He just said, get it over with. Okay, so now, can you hand me the clip? So now this is where you use that clip. So you put, I usually use the largest. Right now we only have a half, but the concept is the same. Sorry, baby, you gotta stand up. All right, so what you do is you go to down motion. You do like a scooping. Not in, but out, you scoop out. So you'll do a blend. Come on. You're only going to be taking a little bit off, but it's mainly to get rid of the, the crazy wild hairs that make him look like he's a big puffy dog. You can even use these clips on their leggings too. Um, you're supposed to use scissors, but for time's sake, you can use these as well. Just, I would do a lot larger than half an inch if you were going to do that Okay, and lastly, uh, we're going to trim this little area up so he doesn't piss on himself. And uh, so this is just clean for when he lifts his legs and doesn't drag it into your house. So same clipper, be extremely careful because of heat as well as this is kind of a sensitive area. And remember, if your dog's fixed, he has some extra skin because of... Uh, they're boys. If they're boys. Now what I do is, instead of like this, I go like that. So you're just taking that extra angle, just takes off most of it and you're nowhere near the skin. Now obviously, if you have a cheaper, uh, Clipper, you take a break in between because it may it may be hot. And the reason why I also angle up is because remember he's got his nipples down here, so you don't want to hurt him.
Right. Next is the eyebrows. Oh, by the way, the reason why you cut his eyebrows at the end is so that you can match the new haircut. Because you can always cut the, the eyebrows at the beginning and it looks really good compared to the really long hair. And then afterwards they look long again. So, we usually do it afterwards. So, obviously separate the eyebrows. And then in the middle. Yep. So, this part you got to hold them real quick. Everybody loves two eyebrows. Pretty good. Good boy. Yeah. All right. And then we just do the other. All right. We're going to do the other one off camera, and then we'll come back and show you Bolter. the end result. Bolter. There you go. See? So you can straight look right at his eyes, because schnauzers have such good personality in their eyes. And they're sneaky too. They, uh, you can tell that they're looking at you when they need to. So, that's the schnauzer. Um, what else we got to do with them? Just comb them a little bit, yep. and he should be good to go. Oh, oh, and we got to put his um, flea. flea stuff on. Oh yeah, actually, a quick tip on combing: when you comb down and you feel a knot, can you do the grabbing of the hair on the other side? If you were to comb down, and you feel a knot right there. You grab here and then comb it out. Because obviously you don't want to pull their hair out, and that hurts. So. But he looks good. That's how white you are. Good boy.